Hi everyone. Um, I hope you all who are joining me live, um, I realize that this is going to live forever or whatever as long as YouTube exists. Um, I hope you all had a good weekend though. So today's exercises are the seal and the crab and a little fun fact about the crab or maybe not so fun fact, I've done two teacher trainings and it wasn't in either of them. Um, so the seal, let's go back to the seal. Um, I think that these, the seal and the crab both can be exercises that when you first learn them, you're like, uh, like what? It's kind of silly. Like, what are we doing here? I don't know. Um, but the seal has really, uh, started to make a lot of sense to me lately. It's really helped me with my control balance. Um, and so I'm excited to talk about it with you. And then the version I'm going to show you of the crab, it, it omits the rolling. And for those of you that don't know what crab is, um, basically the position that I'm going to show you, you would roll over and you would go into kind of like a headstand, but with your knees on the ground. So this is why I don't yet teach it. I hope to one day start to teach it. Um, but just because it's not, it hasn't been in the teacher trainings that I've done, I still don't feel quite confident, um, about taking people through that exercise just with the, um, the risk factor of being on your head. You know, it's not actually a dangerous exercise whatsoever, but um, I would hate to be the cause of someone rolling head first, literally into the floor if they don't gauge their momentum correctly. So seal. Seal, it sounds like seal. You are gonna be clapping your legs. Um, so why do we do seal? It's, it's similar to all of our rolling exercises with the um, added challenge of trying to suspend and balance on your shoulders without any arms. So it's not your jackknife, it's not any of this stuff anymore where you get to push your arms down into the floor. And it actually just occurred to me in real time, maybe that's why, so in Joe's, uh, Joseph Pilates version of jackknife, he actually gets you to flip your palms to face the ceiling when your legs are straight up into the air. So you're eliminating that ability to use your arms. So. Again, maybe that's him thinking like, I'm gonna remove more and more surfaces of my body from the floor as I continue to challenge myself. And now we're in seal and you have no surfaces of your body on the floor and you're trying to balance on the backs of your shoulders. So that's number one. And then for some people that are a little bit tighter, there's going to be a stretch through your peroneal muscles, which are the muscles that live on the sides of your, um, the sides of your shins. Um, and uh, with that foot in the prayer position, I like to think about it as a good way to create um, this tension with your body. So you're, I'm going to teach you how to push your arms into your thighs and vice versa. So that creates this kind of tension. Like if you've ever done any strength training before where you do like a tension style dead bug where you push your hand into your thigh and your thigh into your hand. We do this in my on-demand platform in our reformer on the mat classes. We lay on our back, we push our hands into our thighs and vice versa and we feel our core brace. Same kind of concept. You're pushing your arms into your legs and you're creating that bracing or that tension sensation so you are connected to your whole body and I think that's pretty applicable if you have a yoga practice and you're working on your arm balances. So uh, that's a lot. Let's go through the exercise. I think I'm just going to take you through it once because this is one that's really all about self-exploration. Um, so let me just bring it up. Okay. Oh, let me just redo that. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not quite sure if I fully got it. All right, here we go. Okay, so you're gonna scoot forward towards the front end of your mat. Now, this is what I like to call a grapevine. You can see I'm bringing my hands. This is what's good to go through this uh, without you actually being in your workout. Your arms are gonna go through your legs, around your ankles, and then you're gonna hold the fronts of your feet. Okay, there's two options here. You can see that my feet are together in a prayer position. Those peroneal muscles that I talked about, I tend to have tight peroneal muscles, um, but if you tend to be the type of person that rolls their ankle a lot, for instance, you have a lot of ankle instability, you might choose to do your feet just side by side because you don't want to overstretch those peroneal muscles. So just a little tip there. So here I'm going to think about that tension. So I'm in that C curve, I'm looking down at my pubic bone, I'm balancing up on my hips like I would for rolling like a ball and open leg rocker, but I'm pushing actively my thighs into my arms and vice versa. So I'm creating this like circuit through my whole body. Okay. 
Again, this is optional. You can omit the claps in order to simplify the exercise. You're gonna clap your thighs, not your feet, thighs three times or up to three times. You're gonna roll back and suspend and then come up. So clap, clap, clap. You can do the claps when you roll back and suspend as well, by the way, okay? I like to play this game with myself and I like to try to count to two seconds when I'm back on my shoulders to give myself that feeling of lift and lengthen and suspension. So before you do seal next time, think about those words, lift, suspension, and that's that. That's your seal. So I'm gonna talk you through my top tips. My first is to create that tension. I've already said this, create that tension between your legs and your hands. You can expect to stay strong where you're in a like wet, soggy noodle position, right? So you wanna feel where your body is. Um, my second tip is to omit the claps if it's either when you're up or when you're balancing. Um, and if you wanna challenge yourself more, you can add in those three claps when you're balancing on the shoulders. Um, where else? Yeah, and just think about, I've been talking about that idea of, you know, when you sit up straight, I always use that visual in class, like tie a string to the top of your head and pull that string upwards to give you that feeling of lift and length in your posture. Can you find that here? When you're upside down balancing on your shoulders, can you think about that lift? So you're not necessarily gonna come out of a C curve of your spine, but thinking about that suspension and that's gonna help you have the feeling you need for control balance later on, which that's what I'm super excited about SEAL. And then my last tip is it's not seeing, I love you all on Instagram, I love you. I love seeing there's no judgment. I did this too. I used to just clap my feet and everything else would get wobbly. So I want you to move your thigh bones open, close, open, close. So it actually becomes this abduction, abduction, like separating, adduction, and for some of you that might be a hip stretch depending on how tight your adductors and your abductors are, okay? Peroneal stretch, feet together, no peroneal stretch, uh, feet side by side. So that's my tips for SEAL. Just have fun with it. It's really fun um, and it's silly. Again, if I have someone that's like super grumpy, super serious, whatever, they come into the studio, we are gonna do SEAL because they're, they're gonna leave with a smile or more pissed off, but mostly it's a smile. Okay, so let's talk about crab. Um, and then if you have any questions, of course, pop them into the chat. So crab, like I said, I'm just gonna teach you a prep that I've uh, been enjoying lately. It's helped me if you have a, if you do my reformer on the mat classes or if you have a practice, a classical practice on the reformer, um, you know, we sit with our legs crossed and we do our hug. No, sorry, we do our shave, right? And we're sitting with our legs crossed, we're sitting up straight. We open our arms out to the side, we switch the ankle on top. So if you're the person that when you sit with your non-dominant ankle um, underneath, crossed with your legs in the other direction, it's so uncomfortable, this is gonna help you with that, okay? So let's go through it. My version of crab. So you're sitting with your legs crossed, you're gonna grab the feet, you're gonna find that balance position, and this is just a stretch, so you're just kind of wiggling in position. And now you're gonna see I'm actually gonna to try to pull and wrap my feet behind me as I bend my spine forward. Now here, you can kind of self-correct, you can look down at your hips, your pelvis. I'm really tight through my side seat muscles, um, the side of my hips, so this is a really nice stretch for me. Um, and I'm also asymmetrical in my pelvis, so this really helps me find symmetry and I can kind of look down and self-correct. And you want that active pulling with your arms almost as if you wanna take your feet and be gumby and wrap them around behind you and put your feet behind your back. So you're kind of pulling your legs apart. And this is just a hold, you stay there for as long as you feel is useful to you. And then you're gonna switch the leg that's on top. Chances are, when you go to the second side, it's gonna be your non-dominant side. Okay, and again, you're just exploring and working. So the benefit to this, again, like I said, is it's gonna help you stretch out those tight side seat, side seat muscles if you have them and find more symmetry um, because we all have a dominant side. Where am I going here? Sorry, doing two things at once. We all have a dominant side. Um, and then maybe you are someone that can't sit up with your legs crossed out in front of you. So then I kind of, I would play with like 
maybe maybe you don't bring your legs up off the ground maybe you just attempt to sit up straight and you do you know you prop your hips up with some blocks or some books and you kind of lean forward and you practice folding forward into that position i think like there are so many things that i love about pilates and um if i think back to when i started pilates it was a complete mistake it was a complete accident um i was a dancer and I had a lot of asymmetries through my body. I was born with one of my legs turns out completely, so that was great. And then one of my legs turns in completely, in, inwards completely. And so I had a lot of trouble dancing. And I was always doing yoga and strength training and all these things. And I was, you know, we had a physio on faculty at the school and he would always be giving me exercises to try to help me get more external rotation out of my left leg. And nothing was ever really working like I would see tiny steps towards progress but nothing was ever working until I started doing Pilates and I really believe it's because we're moving and uh, there's never just a stretch there's always like an active component supporting the stretch and I think that's where lasting results happen um, and that's the biggest difference with Pilates so Thank you for watching everyone. What are we doing tomorrow? I always screw this up. I swear I know the order. Um, so tomorrow we are going to be doing rocking. This is why I always forget. I think we're just doing rocking by itself. Yes, that's true. So we're doing rocking and I wanted it to be all by itself because this is a very technical exercise um, and it is a very deep exercise. And so I wanted to just give it the spotlight and then on Wednesday we will be doing our last two exercises so I'll leave you I'm I guess I'm feeling lonely and I'm stalling but I will leave you all with that and I will see you tomorrow at 2 15 thanks everyone bye bye